Welcome to this edition of Online Worship at Fox River. This morning, we're going on a walk. At Fox River, we don't have Stations of the Cross, but we, we have something very similar. It, we have what I call uh, adventure spots. It's known as our faith walk. And there's places where you stop along the faith walk. There's a passage of scripture, there's a bench, and we just dwell upon some positive passages of scripture. It is a walk of faith. Welcome to this edition of the online worship service of Fox River Congregational Church. This is something new for us, and we're making the best of it, because it is still the day the Lord has made, and for that reason, we can rejoice and be glad in it. Let us pray. Merciful God, hear our fervent prayer for all who suffer from the coronavirus. May those who are infected receive the proper treatment and comfort of your healing presence. May their caregivers, families, and neighbors be shielded from the onslaught of the virus. Give solace to those who grieve the loss of loved ones. Protect and guide those who strive to find a cure. And may their work allow them to conquer the disease and restore communities to wholeness and health. Help us to rise above our fears. We pray for those in our prayer network that your healing touch may be realized. Come to us now as you have so patiently done in the past. 
And forgive us when we have failed to believe enough to trust your guidance and the leading of your Holy Spirit as it searches and speaks to our hearts. Grant us both your grace to reconcile and your renewing power to enable us to walk more closely with you. Be with our nation's leaders and with leaders of nations around the world and instill in them the desire to live in peace and the strength of spirit to make reconciliation the norm. We pray for the church. May it be the living presence of Christ in whose name we pray the prayer he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thanks, Jason, Sandy, Anna, and Lily. I have a great appreciation for the Stations of the Cross found in Catholic churches and retreat centers. In fact, this last week, to take a break from the coronavirus isolation, Mercedes and I, we went to Holy Hill and we visited their outdoor stations of the cross. It is a powerful place. Well, at Fox River, we don't really have stations of the cross. We, we have a different approach. In fact, I think it's unique to this ministry. We have what I like to call adventurous places. Adventurous places. A faith walk that stops at adventurous places to wrestle with our human experiences so that God may win the internal battles that we all face. 
adventurous places to prepare us for what's next in our lives. Well, let me ask you, on a faith walk, what's the physical action that's taking place? Well, it's obvious, it's walking. Like many of us, this has been a time for reading and reflection. And I was looking at Amazon online magazine subscription collection. And I saw several magazines on, of all things, the subject of walking. There's Walk Magazine, Walking Magazine, Country Walking Magazine, Great Walks Magazine, and of course, for the zombie enthusiasts upon us, there's Walking Dead Magazine. Now, all of these magazines, with the exception of Walking Dead, they're devoted exclusively to the subject of walking. And as I wandered through these magazines, I thought to myself, what could they possibly be saying in all of these articles? How do they fill their pages year after year with material on walking? I figured I knew all there was to know about walking, but it really doesn't seem that way. I thought, well, in my case, I learned to walk when I was, I think I was 10 months old. And by the time I was two years old, I pretty much mastered the system of walking. Even today, decades later, I still use the same method I used back then. What else is there really to know about walking? Well, apparently there's more to walking than meets the eye. For example, if you're walking for health reasons, you've got to know how to stretch. You've got to know how to pick the right shoes. You've got to know how to pace yourself. You've got to know the right kinds of food to eat. And apparently there's a lot to be said about simply walking. And in the same way, there's a lot to be said about our walk in the faith. There are things that we can do to improve that walk and to grow in our Christian life, which takes us to the first adventurous place on the faith walk. This is a place where we wrestle with our fears, but we wrestle with them in light of the scriptures. And the passage at this first step of faith is from the Psalms, Psalm 27, 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I fear? The Lord is a stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? What can be said about fear? Well, for one thing, fear, it entraps us. By entrapping us, we're, we're likely to not to take the kinds of calculated necessary risk in our lives, like don't learn to swim because you might drown, or don't climb a mountain because you could become overconfident and fall down. Don't learn to fly because you could crash the plane. Don't learn to run your own business because you could go bankrupt. Don't build that dam because it might break. Fear has a way of restricting titans and panics. Fear will replay experiences of failure and of pain and of disappointment or of unpleasantness, and it will become a reminder that that same experience is likely to repeat itself again. Fear, or to be afraid, is mentioned some 449 times in the Bible. Well, there's a kind of fear 
that is also produced by an uncertain future. And this is where I think many of us are today, that fear of an uncertain future. Whenever something threatens our well-being or jeopardizes our normal existence or thrusts us into an unexpected or unplanned or unwanted direction, the natural result is, is fear. But the good news of the gospel that we embrace, that we can embrace this morning, is we do not have to reside in fear. Remember that story in the Bible of Jesus calming the sea? He's with his disciples. It's calm, it's beautiful. And they go on the boat in the Sea of Galilee. Jesus is resting. The scripture tells us he's asleep on the stern of the boat. And then this storm comes up. And the disciples, in their fear and in their panic, they wake Jesus up and they say, Lord, don't you care if we live or die? Don't you care? I think it's interesting. Jesus kind of gets up and he looks around and he says, why are you afraid? Have you no faith? And then he speaks two words. Peace, be still. And the Bible tells us there was this great calm. And the disciples, they're mesmerized. And they say among themselves, who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey? I've often wondered, when the disciples woke Jesus up in their fear, and they asked him the question, Lord, don't you care? We probably ask that kind of question to God many times. In fact, some of us may be asking God that same question today. Lord, don't you care that, that thousands are dying? Don't you care, Lord, that we need a remedy? Don't you care? What were the disciples really wanting Jesus to do when they said, don't you care if we live or die? I have a suspicion that what they really wanted, they wanted Jesus to participate in their fear. Sometimes fear likes company. Some of the things that we read on Facebook and other online social media resources, people are inviting us to be afraid and to join in the fear. Fear loves company, but it's very interesting that Jesus did not participate in their fear. Jesus did something different. And it is also what I believe our Lord wants to do and can do for us today. He doesn't join us in our fear, but he communicates something. He communicated calm, peace, be still. There was a great calm. Jesus would not participate in their fears. Instead, he communicated his calm. Be still. Be still and know that God is still among us. Now, when Jesus spoke to the disciples, he acknowledged that their fears were great and their faith was little. The interesting how the relationship of faith and fear, how it is, it's, it's kind of like a seesaw. When faith is strong, fear has a way of being diminished. When fear is heightened, there is an element of a weak faith. So when we allow fear to rise, our faith will decline. But the opposite is true as well. When we increase our faith, our fears will fall. Daily faith conquers fear. And we need to know that there is also a particular kind of faith here that, that we need to underscore. When Jesus says, have you no faith? I don't think Jesus was talking about 
saving faith. Saving faith is very different. But I think he was talking about our daily living faith. Our saving faith, it, it always remains constant. That was done once and for all for us on the cross. But our daily faith rises or falls according to the strength of our daily relationship with God. And when we are not constantly in intimacy with God, the first storm, when it hits, it will create fear, and it will create panic. We have put together as a church something to help us all with our daily faith living. Jackie Quirk, our minister of congregational care, has partnered with Pastor Nancy Rathbun, and they will be leading a weekly online meditation and prayer gathering on God's promise to help us in troubled times. The verse for the week and the verse for the story is from Isaiah 41, verses 8 through 10. But you, Israel, my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, your descendants of Abraham, my friend, I took you from the ends of the earth. From its furthest corners, I called you. I said, you are my servant. I have chosen you. I have not rejected you. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God, and I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you in my righteous hand. The live Zoom meeting will begin this Wednesday at 7 p.m., and our website has all the connection details to join in that time of meditation. Faith that conquers fear. It really does depend on our trust in God. Now, I know trusting in God, it's engraved on our currency, but it also needs to be graved in our hearts. It is a kind of faith that has an open heart to whatever God provides for us. It is a faith that is manifested in an utter dependence upon the sovereignty of God. When we live by faith, we know that even in the storm or in the midst of the virus, when it is at its worst, we can trust that God is working out to put God's purposes before us. And so God wants us to continue to trust to trust not only in our Lord for our salvation, but also for our relationships, for our resources, for our futures. Because God wants to see our professed faith in action and wants us to put our trust in him for every detail in our lives. So what is God's word for us today? Psalm 27 reminds us, the Lord is our light and our salvation. Whom shall we fear? The Lord is the stronghold of our lives. Of whom shall we be afraid? And all God's people embraced these promises and found there was a calm. Some even wondered, who then is this that even viruses obey? That there is health and healing and wholeness coming to this world. And they were at peace. And God's people did say, Amen.